This fish swallow you whole. I'm actually getting freaked out, especially how we acted the other day. So I think he's still in the middle. I can't see. <gasps> there he is! Whoa! More than 50 species of turtle and tortoise call Garden State Tortoise their home. So today, I'm gonna to take you guys on a tour around our property and show you the majority of the species that get to live outdoors here. So start keeping count. All right, let's start with an American classic. We are inside the Eastern Box Turtle Pen. And here's two of them right now. This is a male, this is a female, and there's over 40 individuals that share this pen together. They've come to us through different means, through surrenders and confiscations over the years, and they're one of my all-time favorite species. In fact, it's how I got my start when I was five years old and my father found one for me. So this is a very naturalistic pen. The turtles get to spend their entire lives out here, and in fact, a lot of the animals that I get to show you today live out here 24-7, 365 days a year. Just look at how beautiful these are. True American icons, one of the most famously known species, very easily recognizable, and they share this pen with the little eastern mud turtle. And that's a species that they occur with in nature, so it makes perfect sense. They both like shallow water, they both like mud, and they also spend a lot of time on land. A lot of people don't know that about mud turtles. Let's move on. Turtles and tortoises occur on six of our seven continents on planet Earth. Antarctica is the only one that turtles and tortoises are not found on. Well, we happen to have at least one example from all six of those continents. And right now, you're in a pen where we house most of our Asian turtles. This right here is a Chinese box turtle. Another really famously known species. These are often kept as pets and they get to spend their lives outdoors here in New Jersey because this species does naturally hibernate. There's so many of them. Check it out over here. There's a couple females right here, and they love this forested area, this little bit of woodland. They're not unlike eastern box turtles, where they like to look for leaf litter and pine litter. That's where they find most of their food because they're omnivorous, and invertebrates are a high portion of their diet, and they also appreciate some water. So we have a little aquascape ecosystem in here for them. There's a big female right there, hanging out under the pine litter. Oh, here's the turtle I want to show you guys. Come here. Very underappreciated species, and I don't know if she's going to come out for us, but this is the Chinese Reeves turtle, Moremi's Reevesii. Very, very popular pet turtle over the years. When they're born, they're little brown turtles with three distinct keels, and you can see that the adults still have them a little bit, but this, this is a very old female, so her shell is kind of smoothed out. But don't be put off by her drab coloration. This is such a hardy and personable species. Um, I know she's not acting like it right now, but usually these females are coming up to me looking for food, and they really like this area. They get along beautifully with the other turtle species that are in here, and that brings me to an important point that you're gonna notice in this video. There are communal species. Sure, some species should never coexist, but a lot of them absolutely can, and that is actually how it is in nature. So a lot of the turtles in here live together peacefully, and we never have any problems. Here comes a little Chinese box turtle right here. I think she wants a drink. Here's a turtle I know many of you have seen before. This is the Red Dragon. He's one of the only hybrid turtles that we house here at GST. He is 50-50, split down the middle, Chinese box turtle and Ryuku black-breasted leaf turtle. This animal actually does hybridize in nature to some degree, and this particular animal was created by accident uh, at another facility, and well, now he just lives here. Beautiful, unbelievably hardy species, and the main reason why he's so hardy is because of that hybrid vigor. And he happens to be made up of two very cold tolerant species, so that helps him out. So along with the Chinese box turtles, Reeves and Red Dragon, we also keep Barrett's box turtles in here, and even our three-toed box turtles. They don't hybridize, and they all live in peace. Now let's move on to this insane expanse of a swamp where our Gulf Coast box turtles live. Oh, look at this big bad lady. 
This is a Peninsula Cooter. I love this species. This is one of the most common freshwater turtles you run into in Florida. And this lady belonged to somebody for, I think it was about 20 years before she came to live here. And she enjoys eating all the duckweed in here, which helps keep things a little bit in control. But hey, this is meant to look like Florida. And uh, well, it's just one big swamp. Let's still look for the Gulf Coast box turtles though. <laughs> go. This guy's the Punisher. That's a wonderful example of an adult male Gulf Coast box turtle, which is the largest member of the North American box turtles. They can grow to be eight inches or more, and the Punisher is, well, every bit that size. He rules the roost in here along with another big male, and, well, we had to give them this much room, even though it's a very small group of them, because the males particularly really need to stay out of each other's way. So a more natural approach to a setup for them is what really keeps the fighting down and obviously really uh, puts a stop to the injuries that can ensue. And along with the Gulf Coast box turtles and that Peninsula Cooter I showed you guys, we also have yellow-bellied slider, Florida red belly, and common snapping turtle in this big enclosure. There you go, buddy. Okay, in this next pen, we have two very interesting species that happen to both come from the same locality, which is Tamaulipas, Mexico. We have the Mexican box turtle and also the yellow mud turtle. I promise there's turtles in here. All right, so here are two fine examples of the Mexican box turtles. These two happen to be males, and you can tell by those beautifully colored head and legs that they are in fact males. The females are more of a uniform color, just like the three-toed box turtles that you just got to see. Keeping with the box turtle theme, we have yet another species of box turtle in this pen. This beautiful animal is the Yucatan box turtle, and no folks, he is not a morph. The males of the Yucatan box turtle are naturally colored whites, blues, yellows, and just sometimes even pinks and lavenders. They're absolutely stunning, and this is just how they occur in nature. It's remarkable. This, as you can see, is a male, and one thing that's really cool about them, you'll notice the eye color doesn't really get red like an eastern box turtle's would. Instead, he makes up for that with that crazy abnormal skin color. Abnormal to us, of course. Really amazing, only native to the Yucatan Peninsula. And they do great out here because they really love this forested type area with a shallow pond and the insane humidity that comes with the New Jersey summer. You can't see. This water is such a beautiful temperature though. It's definitely not cold. <gasps> there he is. Whoa. I'm just kidding, no he's not. <laughs> 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 yeah, Brody. In here lurks the second largest reptile of Garden State tortoise, and that is Chief Brody, the alligator snapping turtle. And uh, because this pond is so deep and big, he can go all the way to the bottom and I don't know where he's going to come up. And uh, lately, he's been showing some insanely bold personality where he actually comes up out of the water, legs and all and shell. And um, trying to save like a toe or two, my hand maybe, and uh, make sure that he gets the shrimp and nothing else. So. Of course he lives in here alone because he would eat anything else. So he doesn't get to be a communal turtle by any means, which he wouldn't want anyway. I usually like to give him shrimp with the head on, but at least he's got the tail and the shell. It's just better for him to get all of that, you know, for calcium and nutrition. You guys have been following his progress. This turtle is really, uh, in my opinion, he's out of the woods now. I got to get a, an updated weight on him, but um, his head is so filled out. He's not as bold today as he usually is, but um, it's because he recently had a pretty good meal. So I'm going to let him go, be on his way. I just wanted you guys to get a nice good look at him, let him enjoy this pond. And uh, there we go. Let's move on to some tortoises now. All right, now we're entering one of my personal favorite parts of our property. This is where we house all of our Mediterranean tortoise species. So to give you a quick lowdown, we've got Western Hermits, Eastern Hermits, Dalmatian Hermits, Ibera Greek, Golden Greek, Libyan Greek, 
another example of Greek that's unnamed currently, marginated tortoise, Russian tortoise, because I've been a little bit obsessed with the tortoises from the genus Testudo. Right here is one of our Libyan Greek tortoise pens, and here is an absolutely beautiful, quintessential example of this tortoise. Beautiful yellow or even orange coloration, and they get that Dalmatian spotting all over the shell. So when you hear me say Dalmatian tortoise, I'm actually talking about a Hermans, that this Dalmatian spotted tortoise is actually the Libyan Greek tortoise. Really obscure, you don't see these too often, and uh, they're not for everybody. They're a sensitive species that a lot of us are working to produce in captivity so that there are captive bred individuals out there that naturally acclimate to our climates over here because these animals, well, they are they are definitely a bit of a challenge. The sunlight, the sandy substrate, and the sparse vegetation down here in South Jersey really helps them out though, and they have been doing well for us for a number of years. Really exciting, really gorgeous, and I'm just the ultimate Mediterranean tortoise nerd, but I won't go on much longer about them. Let me show you guys some other tortoise species. African tortoises are another big deal to us here, and of course the leopard tortoise fits right into that. This is Tank. She's a female leopard tortoise that got surrendered to us just a couple months ago. She's enjoying the summer outside here. You can see that she's got some improper growth, but lucky for her, that is just cosmetic. And she's super strong and healthy otherwise, and these guys are great. They just come out, they just mow things down, and they're a savanna species, so they waste no time polishing off the grasses in this enclosure. This is currently the largest animal here at Garden State Tortoise. This is Mickey, our female Aldabra tortoise, who currently weighs well over 100 pounds, but when she's done growing, she could reach up to 400. We love this tortoise. We've been raising her since she was a little tiny hatchling that fit in the palm of our hands. She's been growing up beautifully, spending the spring, summers, and falls <laughs> outside here. And then she gets to come inside to our big building for the winter. She shares this pen with our Burmese star tortoises and also our beautiful Madagascan radiated tortoises. And like some of the other communal pens, they get along beautifully. Check it out, these two beauties right here will soon be competing for the first place as far as largest animal of Garden State tortoise goes. This is Jack and Sally, and these are our young Galapagos tortoises that are just coming into their second year of life and they are looking absolutely amazing. They live back here in an area that is actually a little bit wetter, higher humidity, and they have several different ponds that they can move in and out of that naturally fill up with water and then drain out. This area is home to several different tortoise species that we house, including redfoot tortoises, cherryhead tortoises, yellowfoot tortoises, and even elongated tortoises. Of course, I can't leave out our African spur-thighed tortoises or sulcatas. This is Dixie, and she represents one of our beautiful animals here. This is the third largest tortoise in the world, and uh, they're a lot of fun, but they're a lot to deal with. They dig very deep burrows, and of course, they mow down everything in their pen. And in fact, this grass will probably soon see its time because they managed to take out three others that were even bigger than this one. Here she comes right now. Beautiful female sulcata tortoise. I absolutely adore this species. They are one of the most popular, most well-known in the world, and they're just big, bad, bold, unbelievable animals. And I really love their coloration too. You know, they're just, they're colored like the earth that they occur on, but uh, there's just something so beautiful about them, right? Ain't that right, Dixie? Well, thanks for gracing us with your presence, but we gotta move on. We still have a lot more animals to see. <laughs> Last but not least is our aquascape ecosystem, the largest body of water on our property that is home to Blanding's turtles, Florida box turtles, North American wood turtle, common musk turtle, northern diamondback terrapin, western painted turtle, northern map turtle, and the spotted turtle. Hey folks, that is just outside here. So total, we've got 43 species that live on our property outdoors here, but next time we're gonna bring you indoors to meet the rest of the animals that call this place home.